The last two years have been quite alarming for the rate at which the world's climate is deteriorating. It's accelerating more than was predicted. There are, of course, a lot of reasons. There are lots of other things happening that are, in fact, taking attention away from climate data, such as bombs being dropped incessantly. But we also know that these very things are contributing exponentially to the global heating that is already happening. Now, with our climate models, we are able to feed in all these different parameters that are changing the long-term climate. And we are able to come up with future projections. We are able to model how the climate would turn out over the next few years to the next few hundred years. But while we know the reasons, we are still quite far away from understanding our climate processes and their mechanisms so well that we can account for everything and understand completely why things are changing the way they are. While factoring in all of the different parameters that are ongoing right now, including emissions from violent attacks being carried out, as well as the influence from El Nino, there still seems to be a little bit of gap in data that doesn't account for 0.2 degrees Celsius warming that is present extra. Scientists have not been able to comfortably explain over the past, in fact, several years why there is this little bit of extra global warming. It is a major, major gap. It is well known and it is well identified in climate science. And turns out there could actually be a potential reason that we've already narrowed down. And that, climate scientists say, is the extinction of low altitude clouds. Researchers from many European climate centers came together for this study, running through data going all the way back to 1940 and figuring out what the differences were in the last couple of years, especially when the warming trend seems to have been unexpectedly accelerated. When they compared data sets across NASA and European satellites and other powerful weather monitoring tools, one thing that stood out was that the planet had a low albedo lately much lower than usual. So what exactly is albedo? Albedo is defined as the reflectivity of our planet. As sunlight hits the planet along with its heat and radiation, white colored features and light colored features such as eyes reflect this light and radiation back into space. That is albedo or reflectivity and it protects the earth from warming. We already know that there is a huge loss of ice at both poles. But even factoring in that loss, albedo seems to be reducing a lot more, especially since the 1970s. All calculations indicate that the decrease in albedo due to ice loss points to about 15% of reflectivity loss. But reflectivity has dropped even more than that. Without this extra albedo drop, the mean temperature would still be 0 0.2, 0 0.23 degrees lower. Then they found another trend that was appearing across multiple data sets. The decline and drop in the formation and prevalence of low altitude cloud cover, especially over the world's oceans in the past decade. Clouds are also lighter in color and they act as an umbrella over the planet. Clouds at all heights and altitudes reflect solar radiation back to space. However, there is a major difference between low-lying clouds and high-altitude clouds. The clouds at high altitudes sometimes act as a reverse umbrella and they end up keeping and trapping all the heat and radiation that was emitted from the Earth's surface within the atmosphere, preventing it from leaving the Earth system. This doesn't happen with lower clouds, which allows the heat to dissipate away much more rapidly. And what seems to be happening is that the clouds that are closest to the surface are disappearing rapidly, the forming less, while high and mid-altitude clouds are seeing a much smaller decline in their formation rates. But why is this so? Why are clouds closer to the ground disappearing? First, of course, is a natural expected rapid climb in atmospheric heating. More and more and more heat over landmass prevents a lot of cloud from forming in very specific feedback systems. 
Low clouds interact with surface and oceanic heat. A feedback loop forms and prevents accumulation of condensation nuclei, preventing organization and formation of more clouds even when there is humidity. Keep in mind that, of course, we still don't fully understand how clouds organize, how different cloud system feedbacks work, and how the different shapes and types and heights of clouds cause micro changes. Warming does lead to more humidity and more cloud formation, but if the clouds are forming at much higher altitudes, it's not really helping our case right here. And then there are anthropogenic emission aerosols. Human emitted aerosols contribute to cloud feedback and formation, specifically aerosols that are emitted by ships over the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans contribute to cloud formation. And this began to be talked about quite a bit during the first year of the pandemic when the entire world went into lockdown and all of global shipping shut down. Many marine fuel aerosols are mainly sulfur compounds and they are lighter in color. So they act as a kind of an artificial cloud dispersing sunlight. Over the oceans, in humidity, they also act as condensation nuclei, allowing formation of low-level clouds over the ocean. Some of these are called ship tracks. They are lines of clouds that form whenever water vapor coalesces around small particles of emitted pollution. This then becomes much lighter in color and reflects light more. These ship tracks are very fascinating. They can accumulate in large numbers and affect the climate. And Climate science, in turn, can see when and how they move around depending on global economic activity. For example, during the few months in 2020, very famously, these ship tracks dropped very rapidly, creating a trend in climate data and causing a temporary spike in temperatures. For about a year after the 2008 financial crisis, there was almost no ship tracks over the Pacific Ocean due to declining trade between Asia and both the Americas, and this showed up on climate data as well. When China's imports slowed down between 2014 and 2016, this was also visible again. There was a steep spike in general between 2003 and 2013 when shipping increased, except for the 2008 financial crisis. And now, 2020 saw lower sulfur regulations for shipping, and since the lockdown and the break, there is even less marine low-altitude clouds, decreasing the planet's overall albedo very suddenly and very rapidly. Now, of course, this is a bad effect for the health of the climate, but it's temporary and there is context. Remember that the loss of these atmospheric anthropogenic aerosols only accounts for about 0.2 degrees of rise in temperatures. The larger point being that the rise is compared to the 1.5 to 2 degrees rise that we are expected to see that is coming from these very same kinds of emissions. When humans are doing 100 points worth destruction and 2 points worth protection, those 2 points don't really count. Even if they do, the 98 points kind of overshadow them. How ship tracks are to be looked at is like this. This is a great large-scale planetary level natural setting to study massive and complex interactions between aerosols and lower altitude clouds and their impact on radiation. The drop in low altitude clouds is at the rate of about 1.3% per decade, but Antarctic ice is dropping at 1.7% per decade. The Arctic ice is dropping at a whopping 12.2% per decade. Of course, these are just percentages of their own quantitative numbers, right? In absolute numbers, taking into consideration the actual amount of albedo, shipping tracks is nothing compared to what ice and clouds, regular clouds, provide us. So, while anthropogenic shipping aerosols over the oceans saw a record low in 2023, so did both polar ice caps. While we do know that the projected heat is going to be worse and worse with rather alarming climate events already occurring, the only thing that this indicates is that we are now finally able to account for that tiny, tiny factor that is causing an unexpected and rapid acceleration in where we are heading in terms of our climate and our temperatures.